Our problems today are probably very many. Hello. I am known as Agent. We are deep in the sub underground of the bunker at the complex. We should be safe enough here to perform this operation. I'll tell you a bit about myself while I'm getting prepared. Damn Chinese rubber gloves. Wouldn't want to come in contact with this piece of equipment just in case there's contamination. As you can see, this is a genuine article. It is a Mark V Hubbard electrometer with an OK to audit sticker dated in the early 80s. And then we'll take a look at this artifact to see what it's about. I wanted to demonstrate that this unit is fully functional. All the controls appear to have some sort of function. See? For instance, if you put a dead body in between these two things, these two cans here, the electrodes which are held by hand, if you put a dead body in there, you would simply get no variation here. You got that? And while we check this thing out with these electrodes, tell you a bit about myself. I'm an old fart. I am an electronics engineer. If you would like to uh, tack a PhD on the end of that, you can do that. Well, here are these supposed cans. These are the electrodes that a person holds on to. Now, I'm wearing protective gear here because I do not want to come in contact with this unit. It is purportedly believed to use, be used in mind control experiments and wholesale mind control of entire populations. The all it measures is just an electrical current, you see. It's just an electrical circuit, and it's constant, and it doesn't vary a hair. Then what varies? Well, you'd have to stretch this meter out here, just representing it as a circuit, and this can, and this can, and put a body in between these two cans, make it a dead body. The unit is, itself is fairly benign. It doesn't really uh, have any evil intent. It's just a piece of electronic equipment. But uh, I'm going to show you some of the features it has. It comes with calibration resistors. So when we clip onto this resistor, the meter actually reads. Incorrectly. Well, there we go. Now it reads right. Huh. Guess my e-meter should be sent back to Qual for a current OK to audit sticker, which, by the way, costs many, many U.S. dollars. Here we go. It's a 12,500 ohm resistor, and this one is a 5,000 ohm resistor which matches up to t the dial here at 2 for whatever the reason. I just wanted to do this small demonstration to show you that this was a functioning device and not a hoax. Now that I've demonstrated that it is functional, we will proceed with the disassembly. Power it off. I had discovered 
small screws hidden in the case by wood putty. The unit actually looks kind of like a piece of 1950s technology, kind of resembling a small tube tester from that era. So we remove these four, three small screws that allows us access to the inside. I understand there is a much modern version. This is known as the Mark V. I understand that there is a current one in use known as the Mark VII in a modern injection molded plastic case, but I'm sure the interior is very similar because the function would be the same. Now with those screws removed, we find out we have the two connections. We have 120 volts here. This is a 120 volt socket. That this old cheater cord from an old from your grandmother's TV plugs into and it charges the internal battery. It must be charged about 12 hours when it's completely dead. I notice that these this wiring probably doesn't uh, really support 120 volt feed. There's no surge protection, there's no uh, grounding. Um, it's actually kind of a dangerous connection considering that is, there's wall current there. Now right next to that though, we have a standard switchcraft quarter inch jack. Isn't that interesting? It's just a standard quarter inch with a switch and there's another calibration resistor so when you unplug it, it allows you to calibrate the meter um, for whatever reason. Now, once we remove this panel, you slide the plexiglass panel out of the slot and it reveals, first of all, a nickel cadmium battery pack. Remove that and set the case aside. Now, we've got it down to its essentials. And we look at the back panel here. Hmm. So the 120 volts, let's see, that would be from this jack here. There's no designation of that it is <laughs> lethal voltage. It goes right to the circuit board here. I don't see a power transformer for charging. Uh, how do they charge? How did this design charge this nickel cadmium battery pack? Now let's see. Oh, I see. It's an archaic form of reducing the AC line voltage down to a usable voltage for charging a little four and a half volt battery pack. The, the underwriters laboratory has actually outlawed this technique used in electronics because any kind of uh, short or failure of this one component and I do not see a fuse whatsoever in here, there are no fuses, uh, it would simply explode while it was trying to charge the battery. Never heard, any of it, never heard of any incidences of this occurring, but it has the potential. It looks like we have some standard radio, ham radio type switches here for different functions for the front panel. And a very nice Allen Bradley pot. Uh, they have sealed this adjustment pot with silicone rubber. Oh, that's interesting because if you notice the tin plating is discolored and has a powdery surface to it. Well, they, uh, the acetic acid when RTV rubber cures, emits acetic acid, tends to corrode parts 